Right, so you're joining me today for round two of our progress in building our very, very own lake. So as you might have already saw back in, I'm going to say late April it was, when we first came up to the place, we had a look at this lovely plot of land that we'd been sort of given, sort of loaned out to create our very, very own Winning Ways Lake. And we had quite a bit of room, I think we had roughly 100 metres by 60-ish. I mean, we can play about that a little bit. So it's about creating the the most economic lake for the sort of size. I mean, as I mentioned before, this is a working commercial fishery. For all of you might have guessed already, this is Marston Fields in, where are we, Sutton Coalfield, right in the middle, nice and easy access for everyone, a lovely, lovely up and coming fishery. And this is where our lake is going to be. And as you can see, it's about making a lake that's sort of right for the area. I mean, it fits in with the fishery already. It stands out as a, if anything, a pleasure, club lake, overspill lake for big open matches, whatever else but it wants to be a nice lake, fitting sort of 20 pegs in, but making what we wanted the fairest lake possible. That was so important. And as you can see behind me, things have changed such a lot. So today's video, what we're gonna go through is, basically we wanna show you where we're up to at the minute, but also we want people to get involved in the key decisions that need to be made. So the lake has basically taken shape, but we still need to choose things like where the pegs are gonna be located, how the slopes are gonna be, how the islands are gonna be, all the little things that make the lake quirky, unique, its own sort of lake, that's the next step we're at. But what we'll do now, well, further ado, we'll have a walk around, show you where we're up to at the minute, and then, as I say, we'll talk about them little decisions, work out what we're gonna to need to do to make it the perfect lake. But we're all so excited in that the lake is finally taking shape and actually looks so close to being a working lake already, just after a bit of digging. Right, so as you can see, I have stood in the middle of the lake as we speak. I'll be, I'll be up to about here when the water's in. And that's one thing we wanted to do, is work out the depths that we want. We want quite a nice shallow lake. We don't want a big expanse of water. We simply haven't got the room. So creating what's become pretty much a snake lake. I mean, a little bit of a quirky, wiggly snake lake. That was creating optimum use of the space that we had, making sure that there was a road that was really, really important to um, create access all the way around it. We'll talk about that in a bit. Just making sure we made as much use of the field possible. So Snake Lake works perfect um, in doing so. Pretty much all we're after. So as you see, this is the back straight. Made a big long back straight. There's probably gonna fit nearly 10, 15, oh no, 10 pegs on the back straight itself. All really, really fair distances, about 14 meters to the island. And as I say, we're stood in the middle of the lake, which is gonna be around five foot deep. Yeah, the clay has already gone in. As you can see, the clay has been laid all down the middle. That just needs to be rollered so it's a bit pretty. And slowly the island's getting built up as well. The island's been made and again, the clay is being put onto that. The clay is really, really important to stop the water from pretty much leaking away. Yeah, <laughs> if we didn't have the clay, the water would be in the field over there and the farmer would not be happy at all. So that's the next step at making the lake waterproof. So a nice steady depth, as we say, at about four, four and a half foot down the middle, makes it easy for everyone to fish. Right, so you join me now at the island, or what <laughs> sort of the island, what's going to be the island? You see the fresh clay has just been put off, and the clay's actually come from just over there on site, which makes it as convenient as it possibly could be. But this isn't going to be the water level, yeah? This is for flattening off, making the island nice and raised, but also any excess is going to be brought down to, to create either that shelf or a slope. I'm definitely going towards the slope, and I'll explain to you why for me, why I think a slope's more important. But as you see at the minute, there's a slope already in place. Yeah, this isn't gonna be the, the base of the lake, it's gonna change. But at the minute, if I get on my knees down here, the water line, as you can imagine it, is gonna be a barrier. Got a nice flat slope going on, it's a barrier. Yeah, just level with that far bank, keeps it all nice. Say creating about five foot down the middle. But at the minute, this slope, as you can imagine, is far, far too severe. Yeah, trying to fish on that, trying to find the flat spot, it doesn't exist. All you're gonna have is your plummet rolling down, being nasty. It's not gonna be properly fishable on. It's gonna be really tricky, which it's the last thing we want. We've all been to venues in the past that are really, really slopey. They're just too hard to fish, especially if you get a wind on that this, say, this place is very, very susceptible to. And also talking about wind, that is gonna be another factor in choosing what we do, whether we have a slope or we have a, a shelf, being that if we put the shelf in, I mean, lovely, lovely to fish on, lovely flat spots, but shelves are very, very susceptible to erosion. And this place is probably the windiest place on the planet that I've ever been. It really does get the wind. And in particular, being right raised up at the top of the fishery where we are, the winds, um, what way is the prevailing wind is always off our back source thing here, a southwesterly. So you can imagine it be whacking into this island all the time. Very, very quickly, your shelves are washed away, meaning 
a lot of work that goes into it just gets messed up so i think pretty much at the minute i'm going towards a nice slow incline of air slope from that far bank instead something that's fishable on yeah what degrees i've not got a clue but if you break it down into meterage we've got 14 meters pretty much from where i said the water line is there to that on the far bank yeah so if i make that far bank slope or we make that far bank slope sort of three and a half four meters it probably brings it to about here so you can imagine that end three and a half four meters of your actual fishing where most of the fishing takes place you're fishing on a nice slow incline so it sort of brings it you know what i mean this sort of height all lovely on the way in that makes it fishable on makes your bait stay in place just you're not fishing on a cliff pretty much we can bring that all the way down to here creating a lovely big slow slope just like um quite a few pegs at partridge the oaks in particular and um, the oaks up in sesse they're dug in a really really nice way i say with that big slow incline of slope that makes them lovely and easy to fish but also they maintain plenty of water in the middle so you've got a nice big deep trough for the fish to be happy in and also quite a, a steeper incline on the near edge that i'm going to take you over there to talk through next meaning that you've got lots of water straight off the edge of your peg making sure you keep nets going but also we can put cover on the inside and the outside of course but the fish have got happy places to be yeah creating some depth with cover which is what you're going to have on the ends on the edges whatever else plus shallower water with cover on the far bank it gives them fish so many options to to be happy above everything else that's so key at this time of um how commercials are now with the amount of fish we put in them we need to make sure they are happy fish not living in a a lunar landscape so to speak so i think that's going to be what we do with the slopes just making sure it's all fishable on everything sealed in nicely as you see the clay's getting laid that's going to be rolling next making it a lovely lovely smooth planet so we can see what's going on smooth planet smooth palette smooth lake in it but anyway it's all looking good clay's next i just want to talk about the inside and next the parking as well which is a key thing when we were designing it right last up we've got the marginal shelf the pegs and the parking as well behind i say marginal shelf that's going to depend where we are but we want that nice gradient very very similar to the far bank maybe a little bit steeper because it's not as important to have the many many options of fishing it we just want to be tight in pretty much down the edge or the bottom of the slope so the marginal slope is going to be a little bit steeper pretty much what we've got now yeah this bit still to be clay line the clay stops here as you can see it just needs the last little bit putting on smoothing out making nice but you see you've got still a lot of room to fish yeah from bank to bank from waterline to waterline you've got this side's actually half a meter wider you've got 14 and a half over that but that might change once we put the clay in so edges lake pretty much done just needs all the posh bits tidy enough so moving to the top of the bank and this is going to be where the pegs are going to go so the water line is sort of here yeah the water line's going to be there somewhere your pegs are literally going to be sat on top of here yes it's all going to be tidied up it's all going to be stoned and the clay is going to come over the top of this as well so your pegs are going to be sat on the bank yeah we've got pretty much all the circumference around the outside of the lake is 296 meters i think which means that we can fit pretty much 20 pegs in at roughly 15 meters ago so it changes a little bit with the ends but if we go 15 14 meters we can get 21 22 it really fits a lot of pegs on just what we wanted so that 20 pegs for me was the the optimum number to be a nice lake i mean it's going to make money for clubs not many clubs are going to exceed 20 but as well having pegs that you can use all 20 by having 14 meters between pegs it's an absolute boat road and boat load of room meaning that we could put every single peg in and hopefully the venue will still fish fine obviously it's better if you have less but it wants to be a good day's fishing while still having 20 people on the lake potentially so as i say this is where your peg's gonna go and we're gonna space them out when it looks prettier so lastly what was really really important was the parking yeah it's something we all wanted it's something these days in a fishery if you can have it it is invaluable i mean we're all getting a little bit older and parking behind our peg is pretty much a joy and that's what we wanted so it's what we got yeah every single peg is parkable behind we're gonna have a a bit of a one-way system going on where you come in at the top end whiz all the way around you can leave your gear or leave your van car whatever behind your peg and at the narrowest point which is where we are now we've still got eight meters behind us so you're gonna have about four meters of lovely turf and then four meters of road with a little bit more turf on the back end but loads and loads of room as i say eight meters just on this bit meaning it's all going to be stone your van can be there at the ends you've got even more room you've got nearly 20 meters in the far corner up there 
you can fit in if you don't want your car behind you you can park it out the way there's so much room for parking there's more parking than tesco's on this like <laughs> there's a lot of room to pull on your gear to make it as convenient as possible so you are in and out no long walks it just makes the lake nice so that's pretty much where we're at say there's so much has gone on but all the exciting bits still to come I mean, as we're walking around now, we're still talking about what fish you're going to go in, how you're going to plant it, where the pegs are going to be, where you want to be, what's the best peg. All that stuff is still to come. It is so exciting. But I'm going to say the mucky bit is well underway and it is taking shape. Really, really exciting. Thank you for all the interest that we've had so far with these messages about the lake. So hopefully we can deliver at the end. But up to now, it really, really is looking promising. And I can't wait already to get my gear out and catch a few.